I initially read about the story in a magazine on a flight uh, between uh, New York and London, and by the time I got off the plane, I felt that it was such an intriguing story. It was a story, it's a great high story, but it was also very unusual in terms of who the perpetrators were, you know, there weren't your usual suspects. You ever feel like you're waiting for something to happen? It pains me to see you embarrass your father. But you don't know what it is. This story didn't need a whole lot of exaggeration or fictionalizing, and it was really important to me that the audience is constantly reminded that it's a true story. And there was something about the real guys and how honest and compelling that they were that I thought, well, if there's a way to keep them in the movie, you know, maybe we can find a whole new way of telling a true story that you haven't seen before. And I think the effect of that is that you watch it in a different way because you're so invested, you're very deeply connected to them and you, you're not in movie world where the consequences of people's actions don't really affect you. In this, you've kind of got skin in the game. You're in, or you're out. How can I tell you if I'm in or I'm out without you telling me the first thing about what I might be in or out of? This would be something dangerous and very exciting. People say the same principles apply to documentary and, and fiction, but the reality is, is that you know, with documentary, you're just trying to capture the truth. You don't really have to engineer it. You're, you're trying to be as kind of unintrusive as possible and just let things play out. Whereas, you know, with fiction filmmaking, you as the director have to kind of manufacture the truth. You know, it's my job to make sure that what the actors are doing feels really honest and really truthful. So it's different, you know, with, with the doc stuff, I just wanted to make sure that what we captured felt real and natural mm -hmm. and that the real guys seemed genuine and unscripted, which they were. Mm -hmm. And then when you go, and then that's done and then you just put that aside and then we went and shot a heist movie. This library is home to the most valuable book in the United States. Twelve million dollars. You really need to see how easy this is going to be. I hadn't written a screenplay before and it wasn't until they showed up and started doing this thing that they do so well that I was like, wow, this is going to work. It's going to work pretty well. Can I just say how dumb this entire thing is? How do you know no one's going to get hurt? I don't want you waking up years from now wondering what could have happened and who you could have been. There was a point where we probably could have cast the biggest names of this age group. Um, and that wasn't really what I wanted for the film. I, I didn't want people who you'd recognize from other big movies. I wanted a group of young up and coming actors who felt quite authentic. You know, they're not, you know, they look real. They're all handsome guys, but they have a very natural kind of real look to them. And, and that was really important that you feel like you can relate to them. They're like you and I. Let's do this. I had this idea that I wanted this whole slightly 70s kind of vibe to it. I felt like, you know, they should be dressed as if they'd gone and raided their grandfather's closet. You know, I was mindful of movies like Taking a Pelham 123, you know, the original where mm -hmm. they will have this kind of sort of slightly kind of odd old man costume. You know, the idea was that, you know, I think the idea that the real guys had was that, you know, people don't tend to question old people. They don't tend to feel threatened by old elderly people. Mm -hmm. And there's a line in the movie where, where Spencer says, you know, being old is the closest thing to being invisible. Mm -hmm. You know, that old people tend to get ignored a lot. And so who's going to suspect a group of elderly men of being robbers? Oh, you know this from all your previous heists? 